My name is Diane Kerr and I have the privilege of being an auntie as an elder of the Wurundjeri people. Um, the current boards I'm on is uh, Native Title Services. I'm chairperson. I'm chairperson of the Indigenous Advisory Committee of the Royal Women's Hospital. Um, I'm a board member of the Consumer Board of the Women's Hospital and I'm patron of the Indigenous Leadership Network of Victoria. Um, and I sit on a few Reconciliation Action Plan committees. I'm Darren Perry. I'm a Nintei man from the northwest of Victoria. Um, I'm currently on the board of Native Toll Services of Victoria and I'm also the chair of the Murray Lower Darling River Indigenous Nations. My uh, traditional owner group is Tungwarang um, and uh, I'm a board member here at uh, Native Toll Services Victoria. Um, uh, I sit on the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Council, um, the chair of our Risk and Audit Committee, um, the chair of another thing called Right Peep for Country. I've sat on other boards um, over, the, over probably the last 20 years. What really attracted me to becoming a board member was the opportunity to become involved in the decision making level, to, to be able to have a role in determining where I go to. I've had a voice for the last few years as an elder. My voice has got stronger over the last few years and I felt that um, when asked to be on boards, I consider it, considered it and then I thought, well, maybe that's a way of getting in there to help make changes and to help my community. If there's a space that there is a, an entity that has a board and has to do with our business and it affects our, whatever our business is. It's, I just think it's fundamental and essential that, that we stand up and um, we come on to, we go onto those boards, put our hands up to get on those boards. It's very important we have Indigenous representation because we have very little representation. You know, we're the traditional first peoples of, of Australia and it's like we're third world people. And I think it's unfair that we don't have a say and it's unfair that other people rule our lives. So if we have an opportunity to be on a board that will assist not only us, but will assist our community and our families, then I think we should take, take that step and take up the baton, so to speak, and, and really get up there because we don't have any representation. We need more and more people in government, in everything, in education. It starts off little, then you keep going. Probably one of the, the major challenges is working out the dynamics of a board. Everybody's got different ideas and perceptions and trying to get that all to gel together can be a bit difficult. But, um, when, you, when you do get it all to work together, the, the achievements that come from that, it's, yeah, it's outstanding. I've had a lot of rewards in the space, um, personal rewards from the space, from um, especially the more you give to that space, the more you think about it and the more you, you give in that space. It's been very interesting. It's been a learning curve for me. You have to learn all these rules and regulations and, um, you know, watch what you say. And when you're out in the community like I am, I have to be careful because people know who I am and what I belong to. So I have to be careful about what I do say. Um, but it has, as I said, it's been an education for me and it's been a pleasure. And um, I'm actually proud of the journey that I'm doing. And I, actually everything I do in my life is for my mother and grandmother. I would urge Indigenous people to stand up and uh, look for places on boards. You know, it, um, it's a personal um, achievement and it can also achieve lots for our people. If you're willing to learn and listen, you, you learn and you listen and learn from a whole host of different people, um, whether they're Indigenous or non-Indigenous. If you don't have a go, you'll always wonder why, or wonder if. And there's no shame in deciding later on that it's not your cup of tea, so to speak. You know, you've had to go and you don't like it. Like, I don't, don't think my journey hasn't been smooth because I've, you know, had a few hisses and, and said, you know, no, I can't do this, I'm not doing it. And 
people have sort of spoken to me and I go, yes, I've done that, yes, I can do that, and they go, well, you know. So as long as, I think if you always have a mentor or someone that you can speak to when you're stressed and someone that you believe in, then I think you can you can get through it. And if you can get through the first year, I think you're pretty right. It's an opportunity to shape our own destiny. We have a bit more control over things if, if we're involved in sort of the, the managerial level. We make the difference. It's the only way to make the difference, to be on the inside, not on the outside.